This video is a follow to my previous video on using these offset cams to clamp boards or disc to a sacrificial fence on the AccuSlice system for the purpose of cutting thin slivers of wood or disc on the bandsaw. The system used these offset cam clamps that were attached to the sacrificial fence by using these brass screw inserts, drilling the holes into my piece of MDF, screwing these brass inserts in place, and then the uh, offset cam screws into the center hole on these brass screw inserts. However, the, the clamping range of these offset cams is about a half an inch, which meant I needed to put my screw inserts spaced every half inch apart. It meant I need a lot of these brass screw inserts in my piece of MDF to give me a wide clamping range for various sized boards. There needed to be a better way to do this, so I just came up with a new idea, which I'll be showing in this video. The system uses a two inch long brass key that slides into a T-channel. On one end of this brass key is a set screw. The set screw enables the brass key to be locked in place on the channel. On the other end of this uh, brass key is another tapped hole that the offset cam clamps into. Therefore, I can adjust this any position along this channel uh, to get the correct height for my clamping. This is a, one of my initial concepts. This is a, just a long sacrificial fence. I have a number of T-slots that are dattled into this uh, piece of MDF. Then I just adjust my clamp to the correct height when I get my board set, lock it in place with an Allen wrench, and then tighten my clamp down. It's a very nice, quick, easy way to adjust the clamp. I can put it in, put any position I want. If I wanted to clamp it, my clamp up in the air, I could do that. I can put it down like that. So I got a complete range of motion for clamping boards of various thicknesses. This first fence really came about because of a customer request. I had a customer who wanted to slice some three-quarter inch boards in half to make three-eighth inch wide boards for the purpose of making jewelry boxes. And he didn't want to have to glue the, the boards to a sacrificial fence or use double-sided tape, which is too inconvenient. So this system actually works quite nicely. And again, it uses these offset cams. They're right on these T-channels. I have five of these T-channels in this board. And on the bottom edge is just a quarter-inch thick by about three-eighth inch wide maple sp uh, spacer. The purpose of it is just a, an edge that I clamp to. So it's just a, an edge the same thickness of the, as the uh, offset cams. <clears throat> and then you, to use this, you just slide your uh, keyway up and down, lock it in place, and then clamp your board in place. <clears throat> the second uh, jig I made was again for doing segmented disc. Remember in our previous video, I made this system for clamping uh, segmented rings and, they, and slicing it on the bandsaw worked quite nicely. This new system uses none of those screw inserts. <clears throat> Instead, I use some quarter inch thick by half inch wide maple spacers on the bottom, again, just to give me a clamping surface, and then using this a single offset cam to clamp it. So I'm clamping at three positions. I have it here, here, and here, so it clamps quite nicely with just one of these uh, offset cams. This is another apparatus I put together uh, using these offset cams on these sliding mounts. Uh, this is a piece of MDF about 18 by 12 inches, and I put two channels in here. I could have put more, but I chose just to put two for this test process. And this bottom uh, angle iron is mounted on those same sliding slots. You can adjust that wherever you want and then lock it in place. And then you could, this could be used for various applications, such as maybe you have a a piece of MDF or plywood, you want to put an edge on it and you want to glue that edge, you can put it in here and then clamp it in place uh, while the glue's, you know, set your glue. Another application would be uh, making some of these laminate strips. You know, you could glue these up on a system like this also. Uh, of course, make sure you put some uh, wax paper or something underneath here first so you don't get uh, your jig all messed up with uh, glue. But uh, just showing other applications for using these uh, offset cams on these sliding mounts. In this video, I'll be demonstrating both how these systems were, were made and then showing the actual operation and use of this on the bandsaw. The 
This is the newest addition to my shop. I added a small metal uh, milling machine and also this small metal lathe. This enables me to do prototype development and also to manufacture some of the small parts for the glue jig and these offset cam clamps that I'm making now. I set my vise up on my uh, mill and I put a couple of parallels in here to uh, set my brass piece so it doesn't go uh, the whole way down. And I've adjusted it such that my uh, centering drill is going to drill a hole right in the center of my brass piece and three-eighths of an inch away from the ends. So I put the piece in, move it against my stop, and then lock my vise. A little bit of cutting fluid, and I'm drilling a hole about a hundred thousandths inch deep. Move the piece out, reverse it 180 degrees, and do the other. I'm going to be drilling and tapping uh, 20 uh, threads per inch, quarter inch diameter uh, screws into these holes. So I need to start by first of all drilling a, a hole a 0.201 inch diameter, which is the number 7 drill. Using my same setup, clamping it tight. my holes ready to tap. <clears throat> okay, next I have to tap these holes uh, on this small mill. And I put in a quarter, 20 thread per inch tap in my chuck. And again, using the same jig to align everything up. So the next thing is these brass pieces need to be trimmed widthwise to fit inside the width of this channel. And I did the calculation and it turns out I got to take 15 thousandths off each side. So a total of 30 thousandths have to come off the width of this piece. Then I have to cut notches for the two uh, T-slot cams there. So I've already taken off 15 thousandths off one side. So I have my parallel sit in there and I lowered my milling cutter down another 15 thousandths. Okay, this is the final step. And this is the cross-section of my uh, T-channel I'm going to be using for this project. And you see there's a little bit of a lip there. So this brass piece has two corners milled off, as you can see, that fit perfectly in this channel. So it slides cleanly and evenly through my channel. So next I have to mill the rest of these pieces in the, on the milling machine to get that corner off. I set my system up with two parallels in my vise, and the parallels enable this piece to, to sit above the jaws on my vise a slight amount so I don't cut in the jaws when I'm cutting those grooves. And I've already done the calculation to determine how deep and how wide to make that groove.
And there's my finished brass piece. I'll just touch this up on a wire wheel to get rid of the other uh, burrs, and that should fit perfect. So these brass inserts are finished now. They slide in uh, the channel, and that lip locks it in place so it doesn't come loose. Now there's these two tapped uh, holes. In one of the holes, I'll be putting these uh, small set screws with a, a nylon base on them. And the other uh, end, I attach my all set cam screws. So these are ready to, uh, to attach. Uh, next thing, I have to make the piece of uh, MDF. That'll be my fence for the AccuSlice system. I'm cutting the uh, dados for these uh, T-slots uh, in my piece of uh, MDF, this piece of MDF 6 inches wide by 36 inches long. And I could have done it on a router, but I think it's just faster and easier just to use my radial arm saw to cut these uh, dados. So I have the depth set, so it's the correct depth of the uh, T-slot, just a hair below the top surface. Okay, those five slots are cut. So next I'll, uh, I'll epoxy these in. Okay, I mixed up some uh, epoxy here, so I'll go ahead and glue these in place. Yeah, those are all epoxied in, but now I want to clamp them. And here's a nice way to clamp these, just using some, this is some scrap metal tubes I laid around. I can just use some spring clamps. One on each side to clamp it in place. Okay, I'll let that dry overnight. And then we'll test out the whole system. There's one additional step which I lost the video on, and that I attached a piece of maple, which is a quarter inch thick by a three eighth inch wide, to the bottom of the fence. It was just glued on with the type on two glue. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate a cutting of this two and a half inch wide by thirty six inch long board of this new fence. As I showed before, I have a piece of uh, maple on the bottom here, just an edge, a clamping edge, and I have five clamps that I'll be using to hold my onto the fence. So the board just mounts against that bottom rail on there, and then you adjust your, your uh, screws and your uh, keyways to lock the board in place. I usually lock the two ends first, and then make sure the center positions are all tighten it down. And that's ready to run through the bandsaw. Now I have, I have attached my five foot rail to my system. I could use, use either a five foot, preferably a six foot rail, because I am cutting a 36 inch long board. But it barely works on this five foot rail. So I have a system ready here. Let me uh, move it in. Let me see, cutting a board maybe, maybe 25 thousandths inch thick might be a good starting place. That was a piece of cherry. Two and a half inches wide, 36 inches long, and 25 thousandths inch thick. It'll work quite nicely.
So this is my desk mounted to my new sacrificial fence, supported on these two rails on the bottom, quarter inch thick maple strips, and then clamped in place with my offset cam. Again, that work quite nice. Segmented disc, 25,000 inch thick.